if rates continue to rise the way that they've been rising, eventually there's going to be a financial accident. Eventually something is going to break, and that's the, what is going to get the Fed moving in the other direction. But it seems like the equity market still has this idea that the Fed's going to ease for easing sake in, in 2024, and I just, I just can't get there. Felix here. Maybe you're worried about the stock market tanking. Maybe you think it's all going to be all right. Either way, you want to understand the fundamentals that drive the market, the data, the facts. You can come to your own conclusion. That's what this video will do for you so you can make more money. Very simple. Let's jump straight into it. This was yesterday. And this is not the reason I made the video. Yeah, stocks can go down a couple of percentage points. That's not it. Is it this? Is it the fact that the present scenarios reminds uh, traders with 40 years trading experience, which is what this chap is, of events in 1987, when the currency turbulence played a key role in exacerbating recession worries. The dollar did some crazy stuff yesterday, and I think the Japanese bought some yen, which actually helped us out. And any hint of a recession now would surely be a devastating blow to, to, to equities, he's essentially saying. So he's saying, look, we don't need a lot. We just need a little bit. And on this little chart here, and this is more like it, the 1987 is, what is it? What the heck is this all about? Well, that was the change of the yields curve. And in right now in 2023, we're approaching the most rapid change ever in yields. That's basically the money you make out of government debt. And that only ever rivals 1987. So it's kind of like a little bit worrying. If you remember 1987, I don't really. It was a pretty long time ago, but that was a pretty nasty market crash. Go <laughs> God, go Goldman Sachs, I said, go Gordon and Sachs. Go Goldman Sachs says, Historically, recessions have often occurred shortly after the Fed stops tightening. Bank of America takes it one further and says hiking cycles always end, not just sometimes, always end with default bankruptcy, extended government shutdowns, corporations, banks, investors basically losing money. And look at this. Look at this. This is the Fed interest rate. And every single time it's gone up, Every single time we've had a crash, we had the 87 stock market crash, the tech bubble of 2000, the subprime crisis and so on. And right now we're around about here. So you really think they're not going to break anything apart from four little banks? They actually weren't that little. I don't believe it. Okay, let's have a look at this then. What have we got? You've got, excuse my handwriting, the US global financial conditions up here. And they are tanking. That's not good. You've got the world. And my handwriting really is appalling, isn't it? Down here, tanking. And this is getting to levels that are as bad as what we had in November 2020, when we actually were pricing in a recession. And then two letters saved us all. There was I and A, just in the other, other order, which apparently is the solution to everything out there. Now, but not everything is bad. We made money yesterday. We made 2% or something yesterday. We're up 112% so far on the year return on capital employed. If you want to see how we do that, exactly how we do that, exactly learn my trading protocol, watch me trade live with you, answer all of your questions and come and join our live trading, trading, training, live trading, trading, training, training uh, on Friday. It's, it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, Felix friends along slash web and I come and join me. Uh, Ask me all the difficult questions. Uh, links down below, felixfrenz.org slash webinar. Now, how bad is this going to be? Well, Goldman Sachs says the 3.5% growth in GDP that we allegedly had last quarter is going to go down to 0.7% in Q4. And what happens after that? Mm, does it turn negative at some point? Even the government fudges, number fudges, sorry, statisticians uh, are going to allow that actual recession? Who knows? Well, what I'm watching for today is something fairly important. This line here that I highlighted in pearl of purple is the 200-day moving average. And we're slightly above it today, slightly above it. You break through that, hell freezes over, and all the computers start selling. Very, very simple. Now, what's this? Well, this is the KRE, that's the banking ETF, essentially. In March, this period here, 
banks were failing, and so bank stocks dropped a lot. In May, we were worried again, so they dropped a lot. And right now, right now, we're actually at May levels of misery. So the banking crisis isn't over. It's just been postponed. We have a one-year reprieve from the Fed. That extra money runs out in March, and then we are exactly where we started, and we're going to get another bailout and possibly a few more banks failing. The market isn't going to like that. Now, non-profitable tech stocks were sold off massively in the last few days, especially yesterday. Why? It's the first thing people sell. People are really risk averse in moments where they get jolted a little bit. And it's all about market psychology, right? You just need a few days of bad data. And I know today we've had some slightly better ADP employment data. It's one data point. We're going to get three more data points this week on employment data. So we'll see where we end up. And the shorts, not the Bermuda ones, but the real hedge fund guys in their little midtown vests and their um, you know, condos on the Upper East Side where they keep the mistress, they have made some serious money yesterday because the most shorted stocks have fallen. So hedge funds win, sadly. The zero DTE guys, those are the guys who are gambling with options and thinking they're geniuses and they're going to make lots of money. I mean, they've really just been lucky. There was a huge amount of core buying yesterday morning because the morning looked quite green, right? And then it flipped during the day. And we haven't had many of those days. I've been warning about this for about a year. Um, a lot of people lost their shirt yesterday on that. Seriously, don't do it. It's just super crazy risky stuff. Now, US 30-year yields are at about 5%. You get literally a 5% return for holding 30-year-long US government debt, the most boring thing in the world. And we last had those levels in 2007. Do you remember what happened in 2008? They made movies about it. Something to do with the housing market, something to do with the stock market crashing. I vaguely recollect that. <laughs> so what gives, right? What do you think is going to happen? The US dollar going up is also particularly nasty because it makes big tech companies less profitable because they make money in yen and in euros and all sorts of currencies. And when they have to then convert it to the real monkey dollar, they, um, did I say that? I did, didn't I? Then um, it's worth less. Now, I think the Japanese government actually intervened yesterday and bought yen which helped to weaken the dollar a little bit. Otherwise, it would be even more extreme. So there you go. Oil is the gas on the inflation fire. And I know it's down a little bit today. Why is it down? Because the oil market is worried about a recession. So you can't have it all, right? You can't have the soft landing. You can't have interest rates coming down, but inflation being high and oil prices falling or going up and everything. Can everything work out fine? No. No, it just doesn't work that way. There isn't really a free lunch. So what is OPEC doing? Well, they're cutting production. So I think I don't I think I think there's a fairly good chance that oil prices will keep going up, but but who knows? Either way, we're still 32% above June oil prices, which is freaking inflationary. Not today, not tomorrow, but it's coming. Fear is back. The VIX is back over 20 which are levels we haven't seen since, what, May, when banks were failing. So that's fear. The bond market fear, which is basically smart but really boring fear. That's bond traders for you. <laughs> uh, I always pick on them. Um, that shooting up isn't particularly glorious either. And again, we haven't seen that since like late May of this year when banks were failing. So there is a lot of stuff out there that makes me just want to turn the lights off. No, not, not quite. It's not that serious. But I just think one needs to be aware of this. Don't just look in the echo chamber where everything is green and glorious and AI. And, and a rebound after a heavy sell-off day is also completely normal. The question is, what is fundamentally driving this market? Money shredding, high interest rates, dubious looking economy. I mean, manufacturing is definitely in recession. They're actually laying people off. That's confirmed. And we get PMI data today, service data, and so on today. It's all around the 50 mark. Below 50, it's officially recession. So whether it's officially a recession or not officially a recession doesn't really matter. The fundamentals are there that the consumer is spending less, right? There is less import cargo in U.S. ports coming in. There are these kind of indicators you can look at and you're going like, well, why is that happening? 
is there so much overstock? Is it just being business is being more cautious? Is there just less demand? You know, coming into Christmas, right? Ports should be really busy. They're not. So I would just say be cautious out there. That's really all I'm going to say to you. And if you want to learn how not to lose money, I'm going to put a bit of video on that where I will actually teach you how to minimize, limit, eliminate risk the way hedge funds do. It's a simple two-step process. If you want to get that video, put down below in the comments you're interested in the risk elimination video, and I'll, I'll make it for you. And otherwise, come and join me on Friday. Learn how to actually make money in this market and in any market. Like, it's fun. The markets move a lot because it's easier for us to actually make money. Felix Friends at webinar. I thank you for watching. I thank you for tuning in.